It's going to be in Proverbs 15, verse 29. So I'll give you guys a minute to get there. 15, 29. Got it. Verse 29. Proverbs 15, verse 29. So they look foolishly, they look down foolishly on those who obey God's word. And because they do not believe that God's, that obeying God's word is righteous, they do not believe that he is or will be righteous, and that they don't believe that he will, that they will be judged for their sins and will be condemned. 
They don't know His righteousness because they are far from God and because God remains far from them and hides His righteousness from them. So why should we not envy the, right, the wicked? Because the wicked are sinning towards their destruction. The wicked, they so deceptive the traps, whether that's tricking and deceiving or bargaining in all of these different areas, and they faintly whisper to the world to gratify the, the, the sins of the flesh. And so they will say to you to resist God, and to feast on the sin that's in the world. And so they actually encourage you to build storehouses of treasures uh, full of uh, pleasure and wealth. And they will encourage you in this way by saying, look, I don't need God. Look at the wealth that I've accumulated for myself. This is the kingdom that I have made out of my own power. And so whether it's sleeping with men and women, whether it's drugs and narcotics, whether it's narcissism or vanity, this is their hobby. And they can be arrogant because they actually do not believe that God's righteousness exists to them and that they will not be condemned. So the wicked become an emissary of Satan. They are the diplomatic representatives of Satan. In, in another sense, they become the devil's attorney and they bargain and they make, uh, they do business with the devil. And so they are paying a high price for their sins. They are paying sins. They are paying their life for sins. And so it's fashionable to go to hell. Yet they don't know this because the Lord is far from them. The Lord has hidden this away from them. And so my encouragement and my exhortation is don't envy the wicked. But the wicked will see God's righteousness and he will see it one day. And that's going to be on the day of judgment. So they are momentarily unaware. They are without fear or without without concern over their own sin. And he is an enemy of God, and he is an offender of God, and he does not wear Christ's colors, and he is in the wrong camp. And so he is once again without worry or concern for the judgment that is upon his sins. So like a thief in the middle of the night, he will, not, he will lose not only his life, but all of the possessions that he boasts of. I want you to kind of think about Jesus with me. Because Jesus is the one who clearly saw God's righteousness. And God has not failed to answer a single one of his prayers, ever. And even though God has not failed in this way to listen and to answer all of his prayers, Jesus did not prosper like the wicked. He wasn't rich, he wasn't handsome, he didn't have an extravagant lifestyle, he didn't have the su successful life that we all desire. Because his desire was for God's righteousness. So even though he was sinless, he was cast out. He was put out to the outer rim. He was displaced in darkness. He was forsaken by his people. And he hung on the cross and he bled and died for us. Our imagination of what it means to see God's righteousness is, is misplaced. Following Jesus does not mean that we will, that we will have everything that the wicked has. Following Jesus means that we will have what the wicked doesn't have. And the two things that the wicked doesn't have is, is his salvation and Christ's righteousness, which makes us righteous. So when we're looking back to C.S. Lewis's book, the wicked spends a lot of time convincing and encouraging other people that God's righteousness is worse. And they rely on their extra dislike of God's righteousness to draw you further into, or propel you further into wickedness. And so they live in foolishness and in error for all the days of their life. But Christians know God's righteousness and they trust in His righteousness because God has favor on them. So moving on to our second point, so that you receive His favor, how does He favor you? He hears your prayers. When, when the text says that, the Lord is far from the wicked, it means that the Lord is far from the wicked in terms of His favor, that He doesn't listen to the wicked's prayers. <coughs> and He actually inclines His ears to those who are righteous. 
Friends, I want you to look around in this room. In BBC, every single member here is favored by God. And that's a reality. Do you believe it? And for non-Christians, I want you to also think with me. And I want you to know that you actually don't have His favor. You don't have His favor, but there is grace and there is mercy that you get to be in this room because God has brought you here to hear the gospel today. And this is the gospel, that you will see His righteousness. And my hope for you is to see it now rather than later. Because when you see it later, it will already be too late. When you see it later, you will already be condemned. When you see it later, you will be in the lake of fire. The reason why you are not a Christian today is because you do not and did not repent of your sins. God is holy, and you and I have sinned against God, and we deserve to be judged, because that is righteous. It is right for us to be judged. And if you do not agree, you are wicked, and He is far from you. You do not have His favor. He died for you and I, so that we can wear Christ's righteousness, so that if we repent of our sins, we can have eternal life with Him forever. All of Christ's people are righteous. So know His righteousness, righteousness now rather than later. Earn His favor today. And His favor is actually to make you exceedingly happy and joyful, both the present and in the future. And so in the future, I'll come back to the more present later, but you will have eternal joy. You will have eternal satisfaction. And you will have an eternal harvest, ones that the wicked will never get to experience. Our third point is, so that your prayers may be answered. In what way does the Lord have favor on your prayers? In what way does He answer your prayers? He will answer all the prayers that will lead to your ultimate satisfaction. Because the wicked right now prospers for their destruction, and they do not know it. And so he answers prayers that actually delight in him. And so when there are prayers that he is not answering, there are a couple of reasons why. The first reason is that those prayers don't actually help us to delight in God. And that is why he's not answering prayer. The second reason why God does not listen or answer the prayer is because it's selfless. Or it's self, or sorry, it's selfish and it's self-seeking. It doesn't help glorify or display God. And lastly, so that he doesn't become a bad father. And you might be wondering, what does that even mean? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't God be good by answering all of my prayers? That's actually not true. How will, how will he allow us to delight in something that is, that is, some, that is, sorry. How will God allow us to delight in something other than himself, who is the most delightful? If he, if he is, our supreme source of joy, and if he is the source of all joy, it would be terrible for him to offer something else other than himself. Other than the fullness of himself, it would be terrible for him to give it to us. So in this sense, in this sense, let's be thankful that God actually does not answer all of our prayers. So praise God that he doesn't answer our prayers. And he says no. Before I close, I want to give you guys a couple of applications. Saints, you have God as your portion. And some of you may think, okay, I have God as my portion, and the wicked are prospering, I'm okay with the whisper prospering now, and I'm okay with uh, being more prosperous than them later. But that's actually not true. The truth is, we have the better portion now, and we have the better portion later. To give sacrificially, to give cheerfully, to to try to love those who are difficult, to live meekly, to be modest, to be poor, they don't count this as a lesser portion. Because we have His favor now. And the reason why is because God's word says so. Because it says that His law is not burdensome. Because it says that His law, God's commandment is a joy for us. When we take a look at the Beatitudes, which I'll read for you, is two. It says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. 
Be glad and rejoice because your reward is great in heaven. So you have the better portion now, and it's better than the portion that the wicked has. Giving, being perse persecuted, trials, these are better portions. Believe it. So keep storing your treasures in heaven. BBC, when you doubt that you have a lesser portion than the wicked, I want you to I want you to believe in God's righteousness. I want you to consider his righteousness and his favor that he has on your life and all the things that he has already given to you and the things that he is willing to give more abundantly in the future as you continue to pray and seek his will. For teens and children, confess your sins and come to Christ. Don't, don't look at your parents or be intimidated by your parents to think that you need their approval to be a Christian first. Because they're not gonna believe for you and they're not gonna yeah, they're not gonna have faith for you. And lastly, I want you guys to pray for the desires of your heart. Because I think that's a good thing. But pray that when you pray, that you may have a desire to enjoy Christ more through what you ask for. So whether that's a spouse, whether that's children, whether that's a new job, let these desires help you to enjoy Christ more. God, in His mercy and in His love for you, will be swift in answering all the prayers that delight Him. So let's close in prayer. Father, we thank You because You have given to us Christ who is the better portion. And through Him, who, as Christ has died for us, we are now, we now have an older brother who is in heaven and who, has, who is preparing a place for us. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done and we are expectant in the crown that we will receive of righteousness in that day. And on that day, we await to hear the words of well done, faithful servant. Help us to love you more. Take sin seriously. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.